Proverbs 3 5. Trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Psalm 91, verse 7. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but shall not come near me. James chapter 1, verse 22. And it says, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what he says. Yes. Psalm 91, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Okay, John 3.16, For God so loved the world that He gave us, His one and only Son to save us, whoever believes in Him shall live forever. Peter 2 verse 7, Give all your ways and cares to God, for He cares about you. Alright, thank you very much. Um, two scriptures that comes to mind when I'm going through tough times, especially in these times that we are in in Nigeria. The first one is of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13 that says that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So I can go through tough times through the strength of Jesus Christ. The second is Isaiah 43 verse 2 that says that if you go through the waters, it will not overflow you. If you go walk through the rivers, you will not drown. If you walk through the fires, I will be with you. So I believe God is with me through thick and thin, I can go through this situation. Thus, these two verses keep me going. Thank you. The verse is Songs of Solomon 6 verse 3, and it says, And my beloved, and my beloved is mine. Yeah. John, is it? John 11, 35, Jesus wept, because it shows that Jesus had emotions too, so I'm allowed to have my emotions, and I can relate with him. Psalm 46 verse 5, God is within her, she will not fail. There's a, there's a new one I, I learned recently, it's um, Proverbs 16 verse 9. It says, the, in their hearts, humans plan their course, but the Lord establishes their steps. Hillcrest. Welcome to Hillcrest Chapel. Go ahead and stand up on your feet and welcome to those who are watching online. I'm so encouraged to hear our students um, reading and relying on some of those scriptures. I'd like to read one this morning. This is uh, Psalm 65. It says, Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall our vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. Blessed is the one you choose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with the goodness of your house and the holiness of your temple. Amen. That's our hope as believers. Let's pray as we begin worship this morning. Jesus, we come before you. We bless your holy name. And we bring you the praise that is due to you as you sit on your throne. We love you. Thank you for your mercy over our transgressions. Lord, thank you for causing and calling us to approach you and be those who dwell in the goodness of your temple. We love you this morning. Amen.
Good morning. Good morning. Um, I can see that we're really excited to be back. Are we? Uh, it's the feeling is mutual. <laughs> you know, after a break, we're just tired. We just feel like the break should continue. Persevere. Hang in there. Okay, we're almost there. All right. So this morning, uh, I'd like to welcome you. Welcome you back. Welcome those who are online as well. And I just have one announcement. There'll be no discipleship this Thursday. Everyone go, aww. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately, there's no discipleship this Thursday. Um, and we'll pick up from next week. So this morning, we're... This time, Sha, if I say you should applaud, you applaud. Okay. So this morning, we're privileged to have Uncle Boston speak with us. It's, um, it's always a blessing to, to stand um, before you. You know, sometimes when, you, when you're active in doing something, and um, after some time, if you're not doing it, sometimes you long for it so much. I think some, sometimes that's the situation I am sometimes. And um, um, I love standing before you um, students, and um, it's been a pleasure and a blessing to come to chapel every day. And let me just say something. I was talking to a friend. Uh, who worked in here, uh, here at Acre School in the, in the UK now. So we've not spoken for quite a long time uh, about Mr. Ishaku. So um, over the over last week, we spoke for quite a long time. So he kept on saying something, that right now, he himself and his children, they really, really appreciate Wednesday. That they wish they can still attend Wednesday Chapel. That it makes a lot of impact. Sometimes you may not know how wonderful and how beautiful it is for all of us to gather, gather like this every Wednesday as a school to share God's word, to pray together, and to sing together. It's so wonderful. And I want you to take that one as a great value that you are going to take out of Hickory School and even to wherever you are going to. So I want you to promise me to do that. Now, this morning, <clears throat> I just want to share something with us very briefly. You see, many times in our lives, when everything is rosy, when everything is good, when everything is fantastic, when everything is going on well, we praise God. In fact, it's very easy for us to praise God. I remember <clears throat> in 1994, uh, when my mom passed on, you know, I'm the youngest of three brothers, and um, it was a very painful one. We prayed, she was sick, you know, she had cancer. We trusted God that she was going to be healed. She was actually, in fact, we were promised that she would come out of it. And she was actually coming out of it and complications happened. So when she died and my, um, my brother came home and told me that, said, can you say, praise God? And you see, in our Nigerian churches, we can easily say, praise God, and everybody shout, hallelujah. Some people even say hallelujah without even noticing that they even said it. But it was very difficult for me and my two older brothers to say praise God at that time. Because it was a very 
painful and mournful moment. It was difficult for us to even say hallelujah. So many times when we are in difficult situation, it's very difficult for us to say praise God and to thank God. But you see, it will surprise you that even sometimes when we are in a very wonderful and good situation, sometimes it's even very difficult to praise God. Because we feel that, ah, well, I'm okay, no problem, everything is rosy, God has done it for me, so let's just forget about God. What I want to just share with you and emphasize this morning is that God wants us to give Him thanks in every situation that we are in life. In fact, one of the greatest weapons that we can use to fight against the devil is our praises. I mean, I just love the songs that we just finished singing right now, exalting God far above anything that may be happening around us, whether in our nation or outside the country, globally happening, focusing our attention on God, giving Him thanks. So this morning, I want us to, I want to emphasize the fact that God works in Romans chapter 8, verse 28, he said, And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. So whether when things are good or when things are bad, when things are exciting or not exciting, God will always make everything to work together for the people that are called according to his purpose. People that actually align their lives according to God's purpose. God works everything for their good. Even when things seem as if it's not working. There are many times we don't even know the things that God, you know, do in our lives. So many things. So this morning I just want to emphasize the fact that we need to give thanks to God. Giving thanks to God. And you see, when you give thanks to God, you don't think give thanks to God with a frown, with your eyes, that with a frowning face, and you know, you are just... Mm, put in your mouth. I mean, you show excitement, like somebody like David, who was just wearing a pants when he was singing, and his wife was so embarrassed, and I said, what kind of king is this one? I mean, you let loose any emotion, and you are just praising God, excited. That is the mood that I want you to be, giving thanks to God for everything that he has done for us. So many times we forget the kind of things that God does. Sometimes, we don't even thank God for the food we eat and the appetite to eat it. I don't know. Have we, have, we ever, have we ever thanked God for the rotation of the earth and the revolution of the earth? Some people don't even know that the earth rotates anyway. <laughs> but do we thank God for that? Do we thank God for the air that we breathe in? Do we thank God for the immunity that he has given us in our body so that we can fight those germs that we get into our bodies Knowingly or unknowingly. I don't know how many, time, how many of you for the last, maybe this session, that you have said, God, I just want to thank you for Hickory School. I want to just, I just want to thank you for my teachers. I don't know. I don't know how many of you have actually thanked God for those gate men that are at the gate there, or even the janitor that cleaned this place. I don't even know how many times you have even said, God, I thank you for my dad and my mom. Or you just feel that they brought you into this world so that they can just serve you and just give you everything that you demand. No. God wants us to give him thanks for everything, every detail of our lives. Even things that we count unnecessary. Things that we feel that mm, they don't even matter. There are so many things that we, actions that we, I mean, we exhibit in life that they are very, very, we are very unconscious of it. Are you, are you grateful to God for that? A lot of times we tend to forget that God makes everything in the universe to function appropriately to aid our existence. Quickly, I want to quickly ask, I pray I have enough time, I want to quickly ask two questions, and I will answer the question. The first question I want to ask is this. This thing should not mess me up. What if the world lost its oxygen for five seconds? Let me tell you what will happen. Research shows that if the world lost its oxygen for five seconds, the Earth will be an extremely dangerous place to live in. Due to the severe sunburn, our inner air will explode. The air pressure on the earth will drop to about 21% and our ears will not get enough time to settle. Without oxygen, 
there will not be any fire and the combustion process in our vehicles will stop. Every mode of transport except electric will fail instantly. Planes flying high in the sky will fall on Earth, and millions of cars running on petrol and diesel will stop on the roads. The beautiful and, be and blue sky will turn completely dark. In between all this, the Earth crust, which is made up of about 45 percent oxygen, will completely crumble if oxygen should cease. The absence of oxygen will make the Earth crust crumble until nothing is left, and send everyone on the, into, on the planet into a free fall. Now, how many times have we thanked God that God has been giving us oxygen? Lord, thank you for oxygen this morning, that I could breathe in oxygen. Thank you. Now, the Earth rotates. Have you ever thanked God for the Earth's rotation? Or have you ever thought of it that what if the Earth stops spinning? The uh, atrophysicist Neil deGrasse de Tyson described it this way. Listen. When the Earth suddenly stops spinning, the Earth inside it will still be moving at the speed of 1,000 miles per hour. It's like when you are driving very fast and you stop immediately. What will happen? At a very great speed, you will just fly out of that car. <laughs> Everything that is not strongly rooted to the bedrock will be displayed at a deadly speed. The building will be uprooted, the monuments, every man-made structure will be uprooted and thrown far, far away. People will be flying out of the windows. They will smash with other structures. Other structures will come right towards the people. It will be a tragedy. Giant waves will come crashing towards the side, submerging everything in the path. The waves will be deadlier than the tsunami, the tsunami and, and the four major oceans will merge and form two super oceans. But do you know the fortunate thing? God won't allow it to happen. <laughs> and that's why we need to thank God for it. Because He's faithful to keep us from allowing this to happen. You know, Matt Redman quickly said something. I mean, in Isaiah chapter 20, 12, verse 4 to 5, he said, Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim His name. Make known among the nations what He has done. And proclaim what, that His name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world, including keeping the universe safe for all of us to exist. You remember that there was a time that some people, I mean, Jesus Christ healed ten lepers. Only one of them came back to say, thank you, Jesus. And Jesus Christ said something quickly. Let me just jump that. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, came back to Jesus, shouting, Praise God! He fell to the ground at Jesus' feet, thanking him for what he has done. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, Didn't I heal ten men? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And Jesus said to the man, Stand up and go. Your faith has healed you. See, whether you thank God or not, God will still do what he has planned to do. But he gives God pleasure when we give him thanks and when we thank him. Psalm 81 verse 1 says, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. God makes all things work together for our good. Nick Vujic says something. He said, I have, I have the choice to be angry at God for what I don't have or be thankful for what I do have. So which one is your choice? I think we should thank God for what we have and trust him that he will give us what we desire to have and be thankful for that. And another, word, another quotation says, the moment you murmur, grumble, and complain, you begin to be unthankful. God wants us to be thankful. Not even to God. 
even to people around us that has done us good. Say thank you to them. I want to quickly watch this video. No word, nothing, but everyone in this video did exactly the same thing.
I don't need to tell you what each one of them did. They gave thanks to God. Can we stand up and say this prayer together? I want us to speak this prayer together as we mean it. One, two, go. Let's say it together. Dear God, today I woke up. I am healthy. I am alive. Thank you. I apologize for all my complaining. I'm truly grateful for all you've done. Amen. God bless you. Have a nice day. Okay. One last song, One last song please. Sorry.
Open up my eyes in wonder Show me who you are and fill me With your heart and lead me In your love to those around me Holy, there is no one like you There is none beside you Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. We love you today, Jesus. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the gospel.